you're doing today? Superb. Good to hear. So what is Dr. J.S. Rajkumar's nickname? Superstar. Superstar. Aptly said, rightly said. So I want you all to settle down, to sit down. We're all set to start this beautiful literary evening. I welcome each and every one of you, family, well-wishers, friends, to the book launch of Scalpel Scribbles, authored by Dr. J.S. Rajkumar, Chairman Lifeline Hospitals. Let's kickstart this evening with the blessings of the Almighty. I invite Dr. Anand Kumar to sing a devotional song. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Smarami Chaturbuje Chandra Kalavadam se Kuchonate Kunkumaraga Sone Hundrekshu Pasanguja Pushpavana Haste Namaste 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 Jagadega Madakai Thank you so much for that heartful, emotional, and beautiful rendition. Now we know, Dr. J.S., where you learned your music from. So for someone who's written textbooks on surgeries, he has now decided to give a poetic voice to the scalpel that has saved and transformed many a life. It's a collection of poems, his life experiences, anecdotes, philosophies that have helped him sail. This precious book has been published by Covenant Media, founded by Vidya Pinto and serial entrepreneur Joshua Madan. I invite Joshua on stage to speak a few words about this book. Put your hands together as we invite our guest on stage. Yeah. Thanks, Sono. Uh, it's tough to be an opening batsman. I've been told uh, strictly four minutes, and the mic gets switched off in uh, four minutes. So now I'll keep time. Uh, this is actually our third publication. The first two um, have actually been written by celebrities. The first one was written by Sanjay Pinto. Um, well-known face on television, and now uh, a very leading uh, lawyer. And the second book was written by another celebrity, uh, Dr. Pradeep Philip. He's an ADGP of police. And uh, the third, of course, by superstar Dr. J.S. Rajkumar. So I'm happy on behalf of Covenant Media that we are probably publishing books only written by celebrities, and I'm sure the uh, this is going to be a bestseller. The first two books have been, you know, printed again because of the tremendous response that we got, and I truly believe the third book will also uh, turn out to be a hit. Doctors and authors, you know, they actually, uh, it's a terrific combination. I was just thinking about it when I was driving down here, that it, they actually make a, a huge or a, or a great combo. Um, I can think of great names like Robin Cook. I can think of... Um, uh, William Carlos, I can think of Khalid Hakiani, and uh, probably India's very own Dr. J.S. Rajkumar joins this combination. We'll put our hands together because I really can't think of many doctors who actually write books because both indulge in the fascination in human condition and it involves emotions and it requires tremendous discipline to actually write this book. We all know Dr. J.S. He's a multifaceted personality. He can sing. We'll probably ask him to strum the guitar and probably sing for us today. Uh, we'll probably get a guitar from somewhere. He can really act well and, you know, he can speak well. He's a genius, and I, and I truly believe that. And um, 
you know, since I have only four minutes, I have lots more to talk. But then I probably would like to say a very small story which happened in my life, which uh, it really made a big impact. I was having, you know, a dinner with, uh, with a client who I badly wanted a deal. Um, you know, as Sonu mentioned, you know, we went to a couple of other businesses. So I took a client along to one of the restaurants here in Chennai. And I was trying to convince this guy, you know, give me this order and I really need this. And uh, one hour, you know, through the dinner, nothing moved, nothing broke ice. And then all of a sudden, Dr. J.S. Rajkumar walks in into that restaurant, you know. It wasn't planned, trust me. So he walks in with his family and, you know, as you know him, he's, you know, he's like full of energy and he just walks in and he looks at, uh, you know, me and the client and, he and I introduced him. And to cut the long story short, the client said, you know, the client was an expat. He came from, uh, he's, a, he's a Brit guy, and uh, he came from some remotest part of London and whatever. Uh, and Dr. J.S. could immediately connect. He said, yeah, I know that street, I know that road, and you know about him, you know, he probably knows everything. Just as broke eyes, not only did I get the deal, but then every time he calls me, you know, he asks me, how's your friend, Dr. J.S. Rajkumar? So, you know, I don't know whether I share this story with your doc, but then um, I wish you all success. And I sincerely believe that this book is going to be a, a, you know, a bestseller and my best wishes. And once again, on behalf of Covenant Media, I wish you the very best. Thank you, Doc. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In the 19th century, there was this engineer, John Rubling, who wanted to build a bridge connecting the Manhattan Islands and to Brooklyn. And the prophets of doom took over and said, you can't do this. And just as they had started, Rubling met with a terrible accident and died. And his son, who was also an architect, had, you know, and he was almost paralyzed. He couldn't walk, he couldn't talk. All that he could do was move one little finger. Now the catch here was that only Rubling and his son knew the design of this bridge. And so using that little finger, he began to tap his wife's hand in the hospital and devised a code of communication. Ladies and gentlemen, he tapped and he tapped and he tapped for 13 long years until the bridge that everyone said couldn't be built was built. When it comes to communication, a lot of people say doctors and communication Doctors writing books, lawyers writing books. I feel doctors, lawyers, journalists, bureaucrats too. You can see very distinguished bureaucrats like Mr. M.K. Narayanan here, somebody I've always admired. You know, they meet so many people. They are exposed to a wide gamut of emotions from, you know, struggle to pain and suffering and euphoria that are the ideal candidates. Uh, I always believe that, in fact, as one of our, one of our authors put it, Writing a book is like having a baby. First, one needs to get pregnant with an idea. Then it has to grow organically within. Then there's a gestation period. And finally, Joshua and Vidya come in as the publishers who are the proverbial midwives in this whole delivery of the book. As far as Dr. Rajkumar is concerned, you know, we're missing Gautam Menon here. And I'm sure if Gautam was here, I would have told him that he should probably direct a film called Dasavataram Part 2 with Dr. J.S. Rajkumar. I'm very sure that he, if he had not become a doctor, he would have become an actor. Look at the kind of roles he's played. I'm not saying nice things just because the situation warrants this. But I can tell you, in, during my stint in NDTV, call him to play badminton, he's there, and he wins. Call him to play the guitar, and he's there. Call him to a debate, even if he's on you know, the tougher side of the motion, he's there. I remember embarrassing him when, I remember we did that interview at Park Sheraton. And I said, Doc, you brought a guitar? He didn't, no questions, he brought his guitar along. And I said, sitting there in the lobby, I want you to sing a love song to your wife and propose. And he did that. He did that in full public clear. He's a man for all seasons, which is why I believe that this is just one of the various feathers in his cap. So we, have, we are so, in fact, Covenant Media is so proud to, to publish your book, Doc. And I can tell you, apart from all his avatars, as a doctor, we know, the surgeon par excellence. You know, after a debate, I remember, this was something on whether doctors should go on strike after one of the doctors was murdered, remember? A very senior elderly consumer activist was there, and he was seeing him out. And he had some doubts. Usually when you meet doctors, you tend to ask a lot of questions. 
So they were asking him a whole lot of questions, and I heard, I, I wasn't eavesdropping, but it was within earshot. I heard Dr. Rajkumar telling him, come to the hospital. Come, leave your wallet behind and come with your heart open. You know, and I thought in this day and age, for a doctor to be saying something like that is so rare and so refreshing. And I really admire you, Doc, for that. Yes, there have been controversies. There have been records. He's so popular that he's, he always makes great copy. He's, he's, a, you know, he's any interviewer's delight. And I can say this having covered him so, for so many years. Uh, I first met him after accidentally swallowing a staple pin. And I went to his brother-in-law, a good friend of mine as well, Dr. Rangarajan. And he said, I'll put you on to my brother-in-law. You meet Dr. Raj. And I went there, and he put me through this. That's the only time I dreaded opening my mouth, by the way. And uh, he did the endoscopy not once, but twice. And I remember, uh, you know, I, I threw up on his coat. And, that was, and then after the whole thing was over, he said, we realized that we're from the same school. He was my super senior. He says, depressingly senior to me. <laughs> but from then on, we've been great friends. And Doc, uh, you know, as I said, you really are gifted. Because even in his, I remember even in that endoscopy when he did, those, those medical notes that he gave me, I remember showing it to my colleagues in the office. And we all had a good laugh. I still remember what he wrote. He wrote lots, and in brackets, lots and lots of food inside. <laughs> right? And even his prescriptions, you know, I don't know how he does it. They should actually patent, like Rajnikan does certain, you know, the mannerisms. When he, I remember going when, for this, some fatty liver thing, he prescribes Silibond, right? And he wrote, he's got beautiful handwriting, calligraphy. Now, in fact, the medical council is planning to make it mandatory for doctors to, to write prescriptions in capital letters, right? So he doesn't need that because his handwriting is like calligraphy. So he, he has this habit of writing and the kind of confidence he gives the patient. You know, because that's so important today, more than the medicines you give, how you're able to, to give the patient a pep talk. And that itself is a healing process. He scribbled something, and then he gave it to me, and he said, Whoosh. I don't know, how, how do you do that? Whoosh. So, Doc, I can tell you, I'm giving you, you know, another idea. We want to commission another book from you. If you can write a book with 25 chapters on 25 of the most challenging surgeries that you've done in your life, 25 of the most challenging surgeries, and I can bet that when that book is out, and when it goes to the stores, when it goes to the landmarks and the Odysseys and Starmark, the book will fly off the shelves, just like you write your prescriptions. Thank you. Thank you so much. I now invite Madam Padma Chandrasekhar to say a few words. So a few words only, I think. <laughs> Thank Is that you, right? Ma'am. Okay. So when Hemachandran, who's the event manager of the event, called me up and said, you know, Dr. Rajkumar's written a book and we'd like you to come and be at the event. Um, I, of course, know Rajkumar. Uh, you know, we keep running into, into each other at random functions here and there, and I, of course, knew him as the founder of Lifeline, uh, somebody who's had a very distinguished academic career. You know, it's not everyone who gets three FRCSs and who becomes, you know, an expert in different kinds of laparoscopic surgeries. I also know you've done a fair amount of charitable work. It's not something that's common in India, believe me. So I said, yes, I will do it. I also must disclose that I know Anand far better than Rajkumar. And you know, Anand and I have been, I, I would say, if I may say so, Anand, very good friends now over the last two years. And I've been you know, observing his uh, entrepreneurial pro progress with great interest and with great uh, pride as you see how he's going. So when Haim asked me to be uh, chief guest, I said, OK, yes. And then Haim sent uh, you know, the poem, I mean, the book of poems. And then I was thinking, hey, this is very interesting. Of course, there's a long history of uh, physicians being writers. You know, on the one hand, you have people like Atul Gawande, you know, very, and Abraham Verghese, both of them write 
about their experiences in hospital, as residents, as internists, and so on and so forth. And that's, you know, almost in a way, not like a textbook, not professional, quasi-professional. And then you have a long history of physicians, very, very distinguished people, like Anton Chekhov, Arthur Conan Doyle, Somerset Maugham, so on and so forth, who've written fiction. Then I said, you know, where is the intersection of poetry and medicine? And I cast back to my eighth or ninth grade English. I was in an ICSE school, so, you know, you had to go through <laughs> Ode to an Urn and all this kind of stuff. And I remember John Keats. And Keats was actually a surgeon. By the way, in those days, in the 18th century, a surgeon was, um, you know, was a barber. Now a surgeon is not a barber. Now a surgeon is, a high, is the most highly qualified professional. But yes, so a surgeon, I mean, uh, Keats trained at Guy's Hospital, and you know, he turned out to be one of the most famous uh, uh, poets. Sadly, he died young. But uh, I was just thinking, okay, so there is a, you know, a, a corollary here. And then I started skipping through doctor's uh, poems. And it was, you know, the one on the clinical PI meeting struck me because, you know, I've, I've had to sit through so many of those mind-numbingly boring meetings myself, and it really struck a chord in me. I like the one on the shoes. In fact, I like most of them, and I was thinking, which poet or poets does he remind me of? And I was thinking, in places, it really sounds to me like an early T.S. Eliot, you know? Short phrases. I, the Alfred Prukok. In, don't think of the wasteland. Think of Alfred Prukok. <laughs> You know, the more positive sides of Eliot. So I was thinking it really sounds like that. So congratulations to you, Dr. Rajkumar. And for the publisher, this is what I'd like to ask the publisher to do. I didn't realize you were such a multi-skilled polymath. I didn't know that you could play the guitar, sing, you know, do all these different things, paint and so on. Maybe you should, they should get you to read this and make it available as an audio, audible audio along with an electronic format on Amazon. It's the simplest thing to do. You'll probably get a much louder circulation. Okay, thank you, and uh, thank you for the pleasure. Congratulations once again. Thank you so much, Padma Dr. Rajkumar, and dear friends, good evening to all of you. At the outset, I compliment Dr. Rajkumar for his excellent literary work. Tamil Nadu is a front-ranking state in several spheres, especially in medicine. Chennai has emerged as a health hub India's health capital with several super speciality hospitals, highly competent medical team, best care, good facilities at affordable cost, friendly and peaceful environment, etc. Honorable Chief Minister's Vision 2023 aims to surpass the health care standards attained by the developed nations. Chief Minister's Health Care Scheme provides best preventive and curative care through private, public-private partnership. Tamil Nadu has achieved a unique place in medical field. This was not possible in a day. All this was achieved due to the rich contributions and ceaseless efforts taken by several veteran doctors like Dr. Gurusami Mudaliyar, Dr. Rangachari, Dr. Yael Mudaliyar, Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy, Dr. Rangabashiam, Dr. C. N. Devanayagam, Dr. Solomon Victor, Dr. A. S. Tambaya, Dr. P. C. Reddy, Dr. C. M. Kareddy, Dr. Shanta, and many, many others. Dr. J. S. Rajkumar has joined this, the galaxy of these superstars in medical field, <laughs> performing thousands of surgeries and producing hundreds of doctors, eminent doctors. Dr. J. S. Rajkumar is the illustrious son of a legendary father, Dr. Sankaran, who is also a B.C. Roy awardee. He is an able and eloquent teacher, <laughs> commanding love and respect of all students. No students would ever skip his classes. Dr. Rajkumar is honored with the 32 gold medals and four foreign fellowships. This reminds me of a couplet from the world-renowned poet Thiruvalluvar, Magan Tandai Kattu Mudavi, Ivan Tandai Enno Tran Kol Sol. Son's duty is to make others wonder what penance got such a son to the father. It is not out of place to mention here that medical field was very closer to the hearts of ancient Tamils also. Saint Poet Thiruvalluvar has dedicated a separate chapter for medicine. Noi Nadi, Noi Mudal Nadi, Adutanikum Vainadi, Vaipachayal. 
similarly, there are several couplets about medical. There are also references to medical treatments and surgeries available in Sangam literature, that is Puranaanuru. Thirumandiram is also a rich treatise on medical ideologies and medical norms. Dr. JSR's approach is always humane and friendly. His medicals, medical and social interests are well known. Dr. Rajkumar and his team were the first to visit the tsunami affected areas in, in 2014, 2004 and spent three weeks in rehabilitation process. I'm amazed to see a doctor excelling in every, even in literary horizon also. I was delighted to see his spontaneous overflow of powerful expressions in his book called Scalpel Scribbles. Dr. JSR's poems are very touching. The poem, Shoes, portrays Nazis, na Nazi soldiers killing others. Non one of the shoes of an innocent Jewish girl who was not alive was longing for the boss and says in an agony, we are shoes, little shoes, pink or blue, with the tiny bows on them, and large shoes, brown, black, beige, and maroon. We are innumerable, unwashed. We are not on the racks, not parked anywhere, heaped together, all sizes and shapes. We, can't, we can chat with each other to pass the time, and the topic is only one. When will our bosses come back? When will our owners come back? Another poem describing the civil war in Sri Lanka illustrates the plight of Sri Lankan Tamils and ends with a touching note. The tears continue because fratricide became uglier and became genocide. By the time you read this poem, a few more civilians would have been butchered. The poem ends, but not the killings. I am reminded of a saying, when words stroll, they become prose. When words dance, they become poetry. Vartekal nadandal avai urai nadai. Vartekal nadanamadinal avai kavidai. And uh, doctor, we are all aware that the prose of prose as well as the poetry of Dr. Rajkumar touches everybody. Dr. Rajkumar is also a philosopher. The questions he asked, he, raised, he has raised in the poem called Gurbani is thought-provoking and philosophical. Thus, he says, does a rain drop no, does a rain, rain drop no, it will die. Does a sun ray no, it will die. Does a wispy cloud no, it will die. The crux of such questions rest on his ultimate question, when will man learn from the raindrop, cloud, and sun ray? Starting from rains in Chennai, all the poems of Dr. Rajkumar are honeydews from fragrant flowers. Dr. JSR, who is as busy as B, stole some time during his frequent air travels and penned this book. Dr. JSR's poetic venture is commendable. With his rich and rewarding experience, vast experience in medical field, he can scale new greater heights in the literary field also. I'm reminded of the evergreen lines of the, the, the great poet Kannadasan, Mabarum Sabayil Nee Nadandal, Unak Malagil Evlavendum. Men may come, men may go, but I will be forever. Dr. JSR's poems, like a river, will be ever flowing and eternal. The man, a creation of God, is not immortal. The man, a creation of God, is not immortal, but his creations, that is, his literary works, will become immortal. A doctor gives life to men. A poet gives life to words. A doctor cues the body. A poet cues the soul. I am sure Dr. J.S.R. his creative writings will be immortal, curing the ills of the society. May he live long and contribute many more literary works. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, of course, our superstar of the evening. Okay, uh, may I please request Dr. Hande to come on stage and speak a few words about Dr. JSR. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
I am thankful to Dr. Raj Kumar for having given me this opportunity <coughs> to say a few words with regards to his excellent book, Scalpel Scribbles. I know <coughs> Dr. Raj Kumar's father very well, Dr. J.R. Shankar. In fact, uh, when I had the privilege of uh, being the health minister here, I and J.R. Shankaran used to interact exceedingly well. And it was uh, his idea, his, uh, Dr. Rajkumar's father's idea, to bring about a huge uh, compilation about the history of medicine, right from Shushruta, Charaka, Hippocrates, and all these things. It is, I think it is there <coughs> in the Madras Medical College <coughs> archives or the library. <coughs> now, uh, when he gave me, sent me this book, I was really amazed. I never thought that this young guy could bring about, bring out such an excellent book. I would, I do not know how many of you read this book. I went through the whole book. Excellent, it is excellent. And the compliments come to you from a person who has written a number of books. I have translated Kamba Ramayanam into English prose. I know how difficult it is to bring out a good book. But in spite of all the difficulties, he has brought out a wonderful book. What he has done, I wanted every one of you to know. That is why I said uh, I volunteered to come and uh, compliment him. <clears throat> Many of you, may, all of us have experience. We sit in an airport, we go to the railway station. Every, all of us have experience, but we are blind. But this guy, Dr. Raj Kumar, is not blind. He kept his eyes open. He, he, his uh, ears were uh, absolutely alert. So he watched every scene. And when he wrote uh, on the Ode to Kumbhakonam tragedy, one would be on tears. More than that, what appealed to me, because many of you may not know about what happened during the World War. Now I am 87 plus. I know what happened during the World War because I was quite uh, active at that time. The Auschwitz, many of you, may, I don't know, you know, Auschwitz is a place where a number of Jews were uh, butchered, killed, gas, all those things. The outside, lakhs or hundreds of thousands of shoes of small children, of adults, all that he has done is he has seen those shoes years later and it has brought out from him an absolute word to all those people <coughs> who had to lose their lives because of the tyranny of Hitler. And the most interesting thing, many of us know about the war, about the Iraq war. And the whole of Iraq war, I'm really amazed, I tell you, hats off to him. The whole of Iraq war, he has compressed in three words, I would say. It's a butchering, or, the, or white people sending black people to kill yellow people. That, not my words, that is Dr. Rajkumar's words I am repeating. I want you all to compliment him with your claps because fantastic. White people. I don't think anyone, if we have a lot of politicians, excellent affairs ministers, everywhere in the last several years, but no one has said this so, in, so, so succinctly. White people sending black people to kill yellow people. The whole of Iraq war, he has put it in a nutshell. That is how number of things, and one of two things of Raja Ram also mentioned about the cloud and other things. That reminds me about Kamba Ramayana. There, Ra Kamban puts in the words of the mouth of the, he puts the words in the mouth of Rama. These clouds come, they burst, they give us water. But do we ever thank the clouds? That is one. That particular thought he has put, you know how? Kurbani of drops of water. That is sacrificing. Kurbani is, is the word, am I right? Kurbani of drops of water. Kurbani of clouds, like that. So I can go on, go on quoting. I do not want to take much of the time. I want every one of you to go every one of the items there. <coughs> the most remarkable thing is we all have experiences. but. We just think about it, next day we forget about it. We just go through the experience, we forget about it. 
but every experience that he has gone through, he has recorded in his mind, he has given some space in his mind, and later on he has converted the whole thing into a very touching thing. Last but not least, one thing I would like to say. <clears throat> you mentioned about uh, the HIV patients. It's really touching. What, you know what you said? The words, I don't know many, whether any of you have read that. He says in that, it is the, I mean, sorrow. Sorrow gives sorrowful experience, gives sweet songs. Am I right? Now, this Keats, many of you do not know. I don't know whether you know Keats. Keats has said, you know, we look before and after and pine for what is not. We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. Almost he has come to the, almost as though he was competing with kids. I don't know that he read kids, but the idea has was born. What, you know what, our sweetest songs, we look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. And the same thing, he has put it a little other, in a different way when he referred to the travails experienced by the HIV and AIDS patients. So he's a man, he's a wonderful surgeon, and many of you may not know his grandfather, Dr. Raja Ratnam, who was my teacher. Brilliant in English, brilliant in Shakespeare. I was also good in Shakespeare, so he started liking me. An illustrious grandson of an illustrious grandfather. <laughs> Dr. J.R. Shankaran is an illustrious son of an illustrious father. And I, I, I really commend this book for the reading of all of you here and many poor persons. Lastly, I would say, this is only a beginning. I'm quite confident he will go a long way and he will definitely be the father of several other wonderful books. An excellent surgeon who uses his knife at the right place, an excellent writer who, who has a master mind in using his pen. My good wishes to him, thank you. I now request Dr. Raja Ram Ayes to give away a memento, a book written by him, Bosses, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, to Dr. J.S. Please, sir. There could be no better award or reward to Dr. Rajkumar than the words of appreciation from Dr. Hande, the eminent uh, doctor. And also, as a token of my deep appreciation, I would like to present uh, the statue of Thiruvalluvar and also a book of mine recently written on the bosses, the good, the bad, and the ugly.